All right, now can you hear me? All right, now can you hear me? All right, I hear myself, so I know it's working. All right, I only got a couple minutes, so I'll do the best I can with what time I have left here. Basically, for you guys that don't know me, I'm Taryn Lupo. I uh, do a lot of sort of activism all over the place, but I um, have been asked to speak to you about publishing. I have been pretty successful with some ebooks online, and I finally got into real print publishing last year, and I've been doing okay for that, considering I, I self publish. Self publishing is kind of a hard route sometimes. So I'm going to explain a little bit first. There's if you're a writer, there's lots of different ways that you can write, and you have to figure out if you really are writing to publish and make money or just writing for fun. Or if you want people, or you're just trying to get out a message and you don't care. Because they're all different vehicles on how you're going to market it. I actually um, have one real successful ebook I don't talk about a lot because, I don't know, it depends on what circle you are in the libertarian movement. Um, it depends on what you know what your beliefs are, but basically, I wrote a book on. Um, I don't know if I should tell you this, but I'm trying to make sure everything's working. I wrote a book on pranks and practical jokes, and basically how to get revenge on someone that's screwing around with you. Now, I keep it pretty anonymous, and I don't tell too many people about it, but I created an entire website to drive sales for this book. Where people really screw up on making a website is they might be awesome at developing a website, but they get zero traffic. My website looks like it's from 1990 and a five-year-old made it, but I get insane traffic. I get about uh, 70 to 90,000 hits a month on it. Now that all is the way I set it up. It took a little while to season it. But what happened was you would get this uh, funnel of people that go to the site to get information about, I just basically made a big website about pranks and jokes, and I gave all that information for free, so it's about 300 pages, and it all funnels back into one sales page for a book that is like the best pranks, and I have not done jack squat on that site for, oh God, probably five years. And I sell about two to three of those a day. So it's about, you know, 15, 20 bucks a day. Now, if you add that up for five years, that's a lot of money. And considering it only took me about, I don't know, a month of hard work to make that, and you keep getting paid on it, it's a pretty good deal. Now, I've moved over into doing more libertarian and, and uh, God, I hate using that word, libertarian <laughs> uh, stuff, but basically what... I'm um, moving on to now is I'm trying to get into the fiction world. I'm pushing out books in fiction that have volunteerist, anarchist, libertarian themes hidden kind of in the book. Kind of, I'd like to be the volunteerist Ayn Rand someday, or Ayn Rand, depending on how, who the hell you are. Ayn Rand. One of these days, you know, where she reached a lot of people that turned them on to libertarian, but I wouldn't call her a volunteerist by any means. I don't think that's a whole other discussion. So I'm sorry I'm trying to speed this up because this was going to be an hour and it's going to 10 minutes. So let me just jump into the meat of this. You have to decide what kind of publishing you want to do. So there's lots of different ways. It used to be a market five years ago where you had to send out a bunch of query letters and you sat and waited and you'd send out hundreds and samples of your work and it was expensive and it took a long time. And if you're really lucky, you might have got a publisher. And then they would wrestle with you on how much they're going to pay you. They would come and bid on your work. You would get an advance on that work. So say you wrote a book and you were searching around for a publisher. The publisher might say, well, I'll give you 10000 or twenty or $30,000 as an advance. And usually you get to keep that money no matter even if the book bombs or not. Some of the newer publishers don't do that. They make you give back the difference or whatever it you know, like say you finally make the book and it goes to sale and it only makes ten thousand dollars, then you have to pay back the twenty thousand. So traditional publishing has a lot of problems. The benefit is you get to be in the big boys. Barnes and Nobles will pick you up. You know, uh, Borders, all that sort of thing. <laughs> George, <laughs> this for you, George, right here, right here. <laughs> anyway, so what happens is. Um, you get the big boys to pick you up, so th that's the benefit. So let's backtrack a minute. 
most people, if you compare what you're selling, fiction or nonfiction, fiction outsells nonfiction hands down any day of the week, pretty much. It's going to sell multiple, multiple times more than nonfiction. Most libertarian writing is nonfiction. It's usually a very niche market that you're pressing a certain angle of uh, you know, volunteerist philosophy to other volunteerists, and you're only going to make 10 or 20 sales of the whole book. If you go towards fiction like I did, it opens up a gigantic market. The flip side is there's a hell of a lot of competition. So it depends on what kind of animal you're making and why you're making your book. Again, if you're just trying to make nonfiction where you want to, uh, you want to, you know, really hammer out your favorite philosophy, and you don't really expect a lot of people to read it, then that's fine. Self-publishing is perfect for you. You don't have to spend a lot of money. There's a way you can do that. If you really want to actually become a popular author, it's a lot more work and it's hard marketing, and that's the road I'm going down right now. Now. Publishing's changed a lot. Remember, I was telling you there's this whole process where you have to beg publishers, and as you being volunteers and anarchist, you got to also deal with a lot of contract law and copyright law, and stuff that you might be morally opposed against. And there's a big hang-up with that. I find myself wrestling with it all the time. That I probably my book was good enough that I probably could have got a publisher to stick it in Barnes and Nobles, and I probably would have sold about fifty thousand books. Now, mind you. I make a dollar for every one of those books that are sold, so you might make 50,000 bucks. Then they're going to have to deal with taxes and reporting and contracts, and you can get sued, and there's a lot of legal crap that, as a, as a person that doesn't really respect the state much, it's hard to deal with that. I have very little patience. And so that's going to limit you tremendously if you feel like I do on the real publishing world. Like if you want to actually use a publisher or an agent, you're going to have to sacrifice your morals a lot um, to do that. Now, the other side of this is that you can get other publishers to, um, sometimes you can ride along with them and let them do all the dirty work and put stuff, like, you know, you can basically go with a publisher that is willing to put their name on everything, kind of like a middleman. Um, and keep you out of it, but you, you make less money. You know, There's a middleman taking a part of the cut. So if I go back to my example before, in the publishing world, I might make a dollar a book. If a book sells for 20 bucks, I might make a buck or two tops. So if I sell 50,000 books through a publisher, you'll get paid $50,000. The road I cho chose was to self-publish. Um, now, I'll make about $10 a sale on a book so I only have to sell 5,000 books to make the same money. I have to do it all, and I get no help. And a lot of times you don't, you probably get kind of treated as a second-class author that you got to get pushed out of the big boys stuff when, when you do print on demand or, or you self-publish, or they don't know who you are. That doesn't mean, I mean, I am in some Barnes & Nobles I can be in, stuff like that. Uh, locally, you can, you can work locally, but it's a lot harder. Now, for you guys that want to publish, my advice is this. Start with ebooks. They're small, they're easy. You can sell them all day long if you know how to do it. And they don't cost anything. They're always in stock. And there's different models you can go with this. I've done lots of experimenting with this. I've done ebooks where I just sell outright, like the one I made about the joke book. There's ebooks like I, I wrote one called Stash Your Swag, which is all about hiding places that people buy. And I, you know, you make like a little YouTube commercial for it and point to it and you advertise it some. And I, I sell some of those still, even that's been a couple of years now. And then there's ebooks where I gave away for free. Like I wrote a book on how to start a black market business, which is aimed at, you know, agorist. And, and I did that just to basically be nice and, and to the community and throw out what I have learned and known. And you can find that on my page. But what I did to make money off that was I sold ads in it. So I think if I remember right, the book's only like 30 pages. So I might have sold ads 30 spots for 25 bucks, and it adds up. So you'll make two or three weeks of work if you can find the advertisers, because each book will take about two to three weeks if you if you do tiny books like that. And you can get paid immediately, and it kind of you at least recoup your cost, make maybe four or five hundred bucks, and then it goes out to the world. 
And that book, God, that little anarchist book I made, the black market one, I see that thing everywhere. So be, by making by making it free, it's really easy to push around. Now, my pirate book I made, that's a lot more difficult because basically with my pirate book, sorry, I need a costume change. My pirate book, the um, I I went a traditional route. Of, I mean, I didn't go a traditional route of publishing. I, I went the the print on demand. For you guys that don't know, the publishing world has changed so much that you can actually print per book. So if you want to write something, um, I don't know, like a family recipe book or a family cookbook or something, where you're only going to give it to your family members and you only have 10 books, that's perfect because they don't charge you to set anything up. You basically can just go order the 10 books and never have to deal with it again. This is also very good for libertarian authors that have a niche market that really aren't going to sell much. Most of the guys I know that are selling stuff um, are only selling like 20 to 30 copies of their books when they come out or maybe 50. I've had a lot of success because mine's fiction but it's still just getting rolling. I have to do a lot of um, marketing locally like I go to fairs, I go to put them in bookstores. I'm selling a lot more that way. Now I did a different approach where I put different versions. I put a free version up of my Pirates of Savannah, which is completely free, but it had ads all in it, um, asking for donations. I did an audio book to drive that. Um, oh, she so wants about that. I'll, I'll switch hats here. This is a explore hat. All right. So I did an audio book to drive that, and that was a really good move because my Podomatic um, audio book, believe it or not, I think I'm past, I think 30,000 downloads this year. So 30,000 people have heard, well, at least downloaded it, so let's say half of them listen to it. 15,000 people have listened to my book, and I'm always asking for donations. And the thing about this is I gave that information completely free and asked for donations, and I made about half my money on donations and half through sales. So every once in a while, I'll get a big donation that catches me back up, so I'll drop 100 or 200 bucks. And it's been great. As that gets out, because it's only getting out more and more and more. It takes about a year to season, you know, where you'll drop the book and you got to keep hounding it and marketing it to get it out. Um, but I really suggest you always make an audio version of your work. It's an easy way to introduce people and just put it out there for free and ask for donations. I get, uh, honestly, it's almost more, it, I'm almost getting to the point where I'm ready to just stop selling my book and just go on donations because <laughs> It pays better sometimes than having to track sales. Then the other thing is um, put it in lots of formats. It has to be at least in an ebook style. It has to be uh, a Kindle style. It has to be a PDF for people that have weird readers that have to convert it. So what happens is, oh, hold on, this is from Mandrick. There's there's George Mandrick's hat. <laughs> so what happens is. You have to get lots of styles to get it to, uh, because people will bitch. Like people will be like, "Oh, I really want the the print version," and they'll only buy the print version, or they'll only buy they'll only listen to audio. They don't have time to read, or you have an ebook but you, they got the wrong reader. So what I found out is basically you just gotta work it over and over and get everybody happy. Put it out in lots of different forms. So the way to get back. I forgot to tie this because remember I'm compressing this from an hour to ten minutes here. With um, self-publishing, you can go with I like Create Space. They're a little more expensive than if you were to just buy. You can make a deal with like a private printer and say I'm going to buy five thousand books, and you'll get a better price that you than you will print on demand. But print on demand lets you buy just a hundred books. So you only have a couple hundred dollars to get going. You can do that. You can buy a couple hundred books. The books will be a little more expensive. You'll have to to raise the price a little. But the convenience and that you also don't um, kill yourself <clears throat> trying to get uh, expenses. Like I've heard of lots of authors that buy 5,000 books and sell 20, you know, and they've lost their ass on their book because nobody wants to buy it. So you have to be real careful with that. I like print on demand. It's easy. It's an easy way to get in. It, you can set it all up online and uh, you can crank out books so fast. Because remember, in the real publishing world, from start, okay, maybe it takes you a year or two to write a book. 
Um, I write really fast. I write maybe in about four to five months. <coughs> most people don't write that fast. They usually write about a book a year. So you go from writing it, you submit it, it sits on some publisher's desk for almost another year while you're trying to get it ready. And then you have to go through all the design process and editing and all that crap. So it almost takes three years to get a book from writing out. Self-publishing, I put that book together and out with under six months. And um, and that was a, a my novel was 125,000 words. So it's not, you can crank some serious stuff out self-publishing. The flip side, again, is I have to market everything. But my goal is only 5,000 books. It's a lot different than, um, it's a lot easier. You know, people are lazy and they don't want to market and they don't want to. They just want to write and not be salesmen and all that crap. And you can do that if you want to go traditional publishing. You just put it out there and your publisher sticks it and hopefully it sells. But that process is really slow and time consuming. And again, there's the moral and ethical problem is you're just, um, you're not going to find a publisher out there that will do it without signing some sort of copyright deal usually. Like I can't find one. Maybe there's one that exists, but they all want you know, uh, they want the state to enforce contracts between y'all, and I just can't do that. I don't know if there's someone after me. I think I probably have to get off here in a sec. Sorry about that. I've got lots more to tell you. I wish I could. But someone is behind me. Yep. Thomas. So, I guess I have to leave. Sorry, guys. Uh, just, you know, my Mac was retarded and wouldn't work. I don't know. So, I'm on the PC for this. It'll be fun. I had lots of other hats to, to turn into. Oh, and here's for all you conspiracy guys. This is what I was going to finish with. My mason hat. <laughs> Hold on, can you see this? My shrine hat. <laughs> oh, is it crooked? There you go. So now you can start the rumors about how I'm one of those dirty lizard mason people. Alright. Sorry I missed you guys. Uh, maybe we can do a recast uh, on a blank space if somebody doesn't show up and I'll, I can give you a lot more information. Thanks. Bye. How do I end this?